while we were yet sinner, God extended his love to us. He extended his kindness to us while we were yet sinner. God would have given, a, given us away. Even while we were yet sinner, he gave his only begotten son. He gave his best gift. Why? So that he can redeem us from our sin. You can't say you are disciplining a child and you are maltreating that child. You can't say you are disciplining a child and you are making that child to suffer like someone that is not an human being. Discipline is good. But any discipline that is done, that puts, I mean, mental torture, that puts the child in a position in which that child lost his or her dignity, dignity, that's not the kind of discipline that God wants us to have. God is kind. Number three, God is compassionate. Somebody say God is compassionate. I say God is compassionate. Let's look at Psalm 103, verse 8. Psalm 103. Verse, Psalm 103, verse 8. It says, the Lord is merciful. And what? Gracious. Slow to what? Does God get angry? Tell me now, talk to me. Does God get angry? You need to get angry sometimes as a father. But look at the end of it. Plenteous in what? In mercy. Be angry, but sin not. Be compassionate. Be compassionate. Number three, God is giving. For God so loved the world, he gave his only, what? Begotten son. Not only that, God is forgiving. God is forgiving. No matter how much our sin was in the past, he forgave everything. A true and faithful father needs to have that attribute to be very forgiving. Forgiving to your wife first. And then forgiving to your children too. You can't say, eh, hey, whatever she has done, I can never forgive her. You know, many times, many a times, why marriages break up is just because of this ego of why, as a man, should I say sorry? Who told you you cannot say sorry? Some of you, you say sorry to 26 year old girl that is your boss at work because you know your what? Your finance depends on it. And then your wife, yeah, she's my wife. I can't say sorry. You know you have done something wrong. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said God will help us in Jesus' name. Number, the, the next one is God is just. Please, as a father, you need to be just. You need to be just. Just in your ways. As you are telling the children to follow you, you have to also follow Christ. You have to make sure you are living in Christ. You have to make sure that your life is right. You have to make sure that all you do, as you are disciplining a child. Look, many parents, I'm telling you this, I've seen this, I've heard this. I even saw a youth. He came to a church. We're having a program. The parents were there. And he said, if I was to follow my parents to Christ, I would not be in Christ. There were elders in that church. They were teaching in that church. He said, because the things they asked us to do, they don't do it. Many of you, you will beat your child for lying, but you are a liar. Many of you, you will build your, you will build your child for not doing their quiet time, but you yourself, you are not just when it comes to that area. There are things that you will not do, and you will be telling the child to do. A good father is an example to the child. A good father teaches by example. The Bible says, our Lord Jesus Christ, the things that he begins to do and to teach. If you are not doing, you can't teach. If you yourself as a father, you are not doing, you cannot teach. But true father teaches, instructs through their action. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I say God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, what are the responsibilities of fathers? Still under point one. Number one, God has ordained fathers as priests in the home. That's your responsibility as a father. You are a priest in your home. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 to 7. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, it, it says and this word, which I commanded this day, shall be in what? In thy heart. 
He said, Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in where? In the house. Fantastic teachers in church, but they don't teach their children at home. Wonderful study scripture teacher in church, but they don't teach their children at home. They teach the body of Christ. They teach the people of God, but they don't teach their children at home. You have to be a priest in your home before you can even offer any priesthood in the household of faith. Look at this. And shall talk of them when thou sitest in the house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest one up. Number two, a father, you are God-ordained trainer of your children. It's good. Thank you, mothers, for what you do. But I'm telling you, as a father, God has ordained you as a trainer of your children. If you fail in that responsibility, God will not ask your wife. When Adam failed in his responsibility as a man in the house, who did God ask? Who sinned? Eve was the one that listened, but God knows that God has made him to be a trainer in that home. God has appointed, he has ordained him to be a trainer in that home. But unfortunately today, many fathers have left the responsibility completely to the woman. They have left it completely to the mothers. Uh, it's your child. And when the child comes out good, that's my child. When the child comes out bad, that's the mother's child. Even though they have left all the responsibility to that mother, God has made you ordained trainer for your children. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27, the Bible says there, train up a child in the way it should go. And when it's old, it will not do what depart from it. Look, let me tell you, the problem we're having today, that's what we are having in the prison today. Children are no more trained. They expect adults to be trained. Train your children to avoid being trained as an adult. How many of you, I know most of us are from Africa. Have you seen a smoked fish before? Can you bend it? No, why? Because it's dry already. Train them when they can be bent. And put your feet down. Look, when you are training, you are not uh, uh, advising. It's not being at that. You have to train the way God has ordained for us to train. Number three, fathers are chief instructors of their family. Let's look at Proverbs 1, verse 8. We saw that in Proverbs 4, verse that we read, but we won't read that again. Proverbs 1, now, verse 8. Fathers are chief instructors. They are not advisors. They are instructors. It says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Fathers, let's go back to instructing. Please. Let's stop advising children. Let's stop sitting down with them and saying, eh, you know that. Uh, no, instruct. If that child is still living under the roof of your house, it's your responsibility to instruct that child. But many of us have lost that ability. Many of us have lost that part of instruction. We'll not be giving the children option. Eh, what do you want to do now? Eh, do you want to go this way or do you want to go that way? and you know the right way, what do you think the child will choose? He will choose the way that places him or her. He says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy womb, of thy mother. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Our children will hear our instruction, but you know, for them to hear it, you have to do what? You have to instruct. Look at Proverbs 13, verse 1. A wise son. He heareth his father's instruction, but his corner heareth not rebuke. Uh, number four now. Fathers are God ordained ruler in their family. They are the commander in chief, whether you like it or not. I'm telling you, sisters, please let your husband do their responsibility as a father. You can be making money more than them. That does not make you the father in the house. 
You can, you know, unfortunately today, the problem we have is this. Mothers buy their way into the heart of the children many a times. The father is instructing. The father is strict and telling the child, this is what God wants you to do. This is what I want you to do based on what God is telling us to do. But the mothers will go, don't mind your father. Don't do this so. We have so many mothers like that today. You are destroying the life and the destiny of that child. If you are buying your way into the heart of the child, just because your husband is performing his responsibility as a man in the house, why would God say, I know Abraham? He will command, not like he will advise. He will command his children after him. I know Abraham. God saying that, that he will command his children after him. Sarah was there, but Abraham will still command his children after him. Why? Because God has called him to be a commander-in-chief of his family. Let's look at 1 Timothy 3, verse 4 and 5. 1 Timothy 3, 4 and 5. Verse 4 and 5. It says, one that ruleth well, his own what? Children, I mean, sorry, his own house. Having his children in subjection. Having your children in subjection. With all what? Gravity. A house where there is no rules, there will be ruins. Any house where there is no rules. You don't give your children rules, you don't give them regulation, there will be ruins, ruins. The children will just behave their own way. Many a times now it's our cell phones that is teaching our children what to do. Is it a laptop, iPad that is children, teaching the children what to do? Why? Because the fathers are not present. Not like they are not physically present, but they are not present in their responsibility. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. How can your son leave home without you knowing where he's going to? It's under your roof. How can your daughter spend two, three days outside without you knowing where that daughter is? It's because you, are no, you have lost what it takes to be a father. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. I said that will not be our portions in Jesus' name. Number five, fathers are providers for their own. First Timothy 5, 8. He that provided enough for his household is worse than an infidel. It's no more infidel. It's worse than an infidel. That's what the Bible says. Fathers are providers. But look, let me tell you one thing. Don't stop at providing. That's what, it's just... Providing is just like 20% of the whole equation. Many fathers will say, I'm a pro I provide, I provide, I provide. If you provide and you don't give instruction, I'm telling you, your provision will send that child outside, and that child will become a destitute. As you are providing, you are instructing. As you are providing, you are commanding. As you are providing, you are training. Every component of it must be in place. Don't say, well, I give you all, everything. I, I provide everything. And don't let any work, please, take you out of your responsibility as a father. If you can provide a dollar for your child and every other component is intact, please do that. Rather than providing $10 and you are not available to instruct, you are not available to command. Why? Because you are always at work. When you are stepping out, the child is sleeping. When you come back home, the child is sleeping. Why will you provide? I'm sorry, where will you carry out your other responsibilities as a father? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Pitfall, uh, point number two. Pitfall of a failed father. Let's look at 1 Samuel. We quickly run through this. 1 Samuel 2, the story of a man. I pray your case will not, your life will not end like that of Eli in Jesus' name. Let's look at 1 Samuel 2, verse 12. 1 Samuel 2, verse 12. It says, Now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Their father was a priest. They knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. It says, And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants came while the, fle the flesh <coughs> was in the setting with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand and would struck it into the pan and kettle and can join a pot, and all the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh until all the Israel that came thither 
also, before they burned the fat, the priest came, servant came, and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to the roast for the people, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail the burnt fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desire, now he would answer him, nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord, and Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, guarded with a linen effort. Let's look at verse 27 because of our time. Verse 27, and there came a man of God unto Eli. Eli had stories about his children, but he did nothing. He did not put his feet down as a father. He failed. And said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father, when thou were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And I did choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an effort before me. And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offering made by the fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, Kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honor it thy sons above. There's no place in the Bible where God says you honor your children. There's no place in the Bible to the extent of honoring them more than God. Honoring them more than God. You see evil in their hand. You keep quiet about it. God it, it detests evil. But it's my children. You keep quiet. You are honoring them indirectly above God. It says, verse 39, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. Can you imagine that? God wanted his house and the house of his father to walk before him. But because he failed in his responsibility as a father. God changed his mind. He said, for them that honor me, will I honor. For they that despise me shall be lightly despised. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thy hand and the hands of thy father's house, that they shall not be an old man in thy house. Wow. Because of failure of a man. Generational cost came upon the family. You will not fail God. I say you will not fail God. Amen. What are the things, what are the pitfalls that made him to fail? Number one, overlooking faults. He was overlooking the children's faults. A small fault, you overlook it. A child is lying, you overlook it. Lying becomes something else. Lying leads to stealing. Stealing leads to something else. Overlooking fault. Number two, non challenge attitude. It does not matter. I don't care. You don't watch what your children are watching. You don't check what your children are doing. You don't call them to find out what are you doing. It's not, uh, I mean, she, 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 she knows what she's doing. He knows what he's doing. Number three, over familiarity. Over familiarity. Please, it's good to be a friend to your children, but you need to draw the line. Don't be too familiar with your children to the extent that your instruction does not look like an instruction, that your commandment does not look like a commandment, that when you give instructions, take for instance, if I'm a friend to my brother here, I can only advise him as a friend. I can't instruct him. Because we are friends. If I instruct him, we're like, what's your problem? We are friends. Please draw the line. Give room for instruction. You can be friends to them so that you can know what's going on in their life, but you are still a father to them. You are a father first before you are a friend to them. Give room for commandment. Give room for instructions. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Don't be too familiar. Number th four, ungodly comparison. Please, your children are different from children of others. The only template you need is the Bible. And uh, don't say, uh, look at the way Brother A is training his children. And you want to copy everything Brother A is doing. Brother A is having his own children. You have your own children. Study your children. 
Study their attributes. Do you know that the son of a lion is a what? Is a lion. The son of a sheep is a what? Is a sheep. The same thing. There are some things that are attributes that were in you before you gave your life to Christ that will just spring up in your children. And you want to use brother A, way of training his children. You know your problem when you were like that. Let God use that to turn the life of your children around. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I say God will help us in Jesus' name. We'll go to the last point now. Prophet of a fervent father. Prophet of a fervent fire. Let's look further. Let's look at Isaiah 54. When you do all the instructions of God and you take up your responsibility as a true father, what are the profits that you gain from that? Isaiah 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. I thought somebody would say amen. Great shall be the peace of who? Of thy children. It says in righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Thou shalt not fear. And from terror, he shall not come near thee. That's a prophet. Your children will be taught of the Lord. Through you, the instructions of the Lord that you give unto them, using the scriptures as a template, using the word of God as a template. Let's look at Proverbs 17, verse 6. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Proverbs 17, verse 3. Children's children are the crown of old men. The glory of children are what? Their fathers. That's the glory of your children. And their glory, their, your children will glory even in your godliness in Jesus' name. Psalm 112, Psalm 112, verse 1. Psalm 112, Psalm 112 from verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be what? Mighty upon the earth. Father, fear God. Father, walk in the way of God. Father, be a godly father. The Bible says his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. It's not school that makes children mighty. Honestly, I'm telling you. There are people that went to Ivy League school that are struggling. It's not school that makes children, it's good for your children to go to the best of schools. But if the best of schools that you send them to is lacking the best of home training, I'm telling you, that child cannot come out well. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon his head. The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure forever. Upon the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. I pray that God will make you to profit even from your children living for God in Jesus' name. Isaiah 8, Isaiah 8 verse 18 before we pray. Isaiah 8 verse 18. Isaiah 8 verse, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord are giving me are for what? Are for what? And for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Your children shall be for signs and wonders. Somebody is not saying a good amen. I say your children shall be for signs and wonders. Your children shall follow the Lord. Your children shall know the Lord. But you remember you have a responsibility to play. Don't Put, don't relegate your responsibility to another. Don't delegate your responsibility to another. Play your responsibility well, and the Lord will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and go to the Lord in prayer. We want to talk to the Lord. Let's begin to pray now and tell the Lord, Lord, help me. I have had instruction on how to train my children. I have had instruction on how to be a good father. You want to pray for God's help? You want to pray for the grace of God? That that grace of God will be abundant in your life. That the Lord will give you the grace. The Lord will give you the grace. It will give you the grace. Divine enablement. You need divine enablement. You need the grace of God to be who God has called you to be. It's a ministry. I told us it's a calling. Fatherhood is a calling that you need to take. I mean, and do and do it well. Pray that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name, we pray. I want us to stretch our hands into the life of our fathers in the house. If you're a father, I will just step out a little so that the church can pray for us. We all need prayer. Yes, uh, let's step out. If you're a father in the house, let's step out and let's pray. Uh, the remaining part of this congregation will pray for us that God of heaven, all the virtues and graces we need to play our part, to be responsible, to give the family a direction that God will grant unto us, visions from above, vision from above, to lead the family aright. You know, if Isaac was not listening, of course, he would have gone uh, they are, he will have gone to sojourn in a land and he will have suffered, but he listened. He intended to make a move, but the Lord told him, stay where you are. And the Bible says, Isaac sold in the land and he reaped more in hundredfold. Now, the issue is this. If our fathers were not getting the right revelation, the right vision to lead the family in the right direction, it boils down to the, the suffering, the effect we stream down to the family and it will affect the descendants of the family we all know what jacob passed through all because of course he has his own decision he has his own mindset we want to stretch our hands into to our fathers this morning and pray oh god all our fathers that are standing in front of your puppy this morning all as men that are already already in the pit pull them out of the pit and made them endow them with virtues of grace virtues of wisdom virtues of grace that can make them fulfill their responsibility in the land in their families in jesus name and any family that is going through attack want to tell the lord the bible says, for this same purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil yes anyone that is under a spell that the power of god will liberate will deliver them in the name of jesus Vision for the hour that God will grant unto our fathers. Wisdom from above, God will grant unto them. Provision. Nowhere there is a vision. For every vision, there will be a provision. If we are following the visions, there will be provision to take care. There will be a provision to take care of every vision. But where there is no vision, Bible says, my people perish because they, they lack vision, they lack direction. And Bible says, he that wandered away from the pathway of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We don't want our fathers to remain in the congregation of the dead. We want God to give them the understanding of the hour. Understanding of the hour. Wisdom of the hour. To lead the family aright. And that God will restore to them the authority authority to speak like joshua joshua said as for me and my house we shall serve the lord he didn't need to negotiate with any child he didn't need to negotiate with it he said we shall serve the lord and that settles it so if others are compromised he said, as for me and my house that's a man of authority a man that has a backbone a man that is able to put his foot on the ground and say yes my family must follow the authority to lead the family aright on the pathway of wisdom and God will grant to appear our fathers in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you because we have you as our Father. And to you, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning, to you we have come this morning asking for direction for our fathers. And we are trusting you, you that giveth wisdom, we are trusting you this morning that you give our fathers wisdom, understanding, and direction to lead the family aright in Jesus' name. Right in the Garden of Eden, you brought all the animals to Adam. And because you created Adam in your own image, he was able to decipher and was able to give the right nomenclature to every animal that came his pathway. We are trusting you this morning. Divine intuition from above. Endow upon our fathers in Jesus' name. 
And we pray that henceforth, as we declare, as we lead the family, it will be in error-free direction, leading the family to fulfill divine purposes in Jesus' name. As we speak, so shall it be. As we direct, our family will follow. In the name of Jesus. And every trap that the enemy has set in the path of any father standing in front of the pulpit this morning, Bible says, in vain is the next prayer before any board. And that he that did get a piece shall fall into it. And he that rolleth a stone shall return upon his head. And Isaiah 7, 7 said, Thus said the Lord, it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Any plan, any strategy, any scheme of the devil against any one of our fathers standing here this morning. Uh, say that scheme shall not stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty. So that they were unable to perform the enterprise of their hand. Any enterprise that is not of God. Any devices that is not of God, contrary to the peace, contrary to the prospect, contrary to the progress of anyone standing here this morning, oh Lord, we nullify them in Jesus' name. And we pray, as you give the vision, open our eyes to, this, to see the provision in the name of Jesus. Lord, you gave Abraham a vision, but there was a provision to back up. Lord, we need to be responsible spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. All the provisions we need to play our role, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. And together, give us a happy home. Amen. Give us a happy family. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we are coming for them, we we'll sing this song together. We are celebrating our fathers and we're also calling on our father. All right, we are waiting for our children to line up. They have a rendition for us. Father, bless my home. Father, bless my home. Father, bless my family. Father, bless my home. Children, you can come up, please, for your rendition. Father, bless my home. Father, bless my home. Father, bless my family. Know for all you've been doing in our lives and the family and the church of the living God and we have come to render this song out the children ministry and to say thank you for all you do and we pray that God blessings will continue to abound in your life all that you need to continue fulfilling this ministry of fatherhood the Lord will grant unto you the Lord will bestow upon you in Jesus' name. 
So happy Father's Day once again, and happy listening.
May the Lord bless, keep continue to empower you and, and reward your labor over us and in God's vineyard. The Lord saw fit and place you the wisest and strongest of soul to love and care for. The love you are giving us is healing and consoling. You are always in our corner, though not showing it all the time. When we are out of line, you gave tough love, not afraid to offend. Your steady hand has been our navigating North Star, showing God's light and warmth to behold. Thank you for the love, for the good times that we see here. Thank you for teaching us God's word, both in words and in deeds. I thank God for your kindness. I thank God for your love. I thank God for changing me with your example. I love you, Daddy. Father, in your wisdom and love who made all things, bless our fathers who have taken up responsibilities of parenting in the way of the Lord. Strengthen them by your love that they may continue to be loving, caring persons that they are meant to be. Help them to lead us examples as Christ has shown them. Bless the works of their hands so they will be blessed and continue to be blessings to their families. Protect them from all evil. Help them to continue to live in your purpose for their lives until they see you in heaven. Grant all these things to Christ our Lord. Amen.
grow in the way of the Lord, may God make them a source of joy to us, a source of joy to many generations in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll rise up as we share the grace and fellowship. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Happy Father's Day to you all. Uh, I think the church has a little uh, gesture for us in the basement. Our gracious Father, we want to thank you for another time to be in your presence. God of heaven, we want to appreciate you because there is none like you. We well, thank you because you are the almighty God, the governor general of the entire universe. Lord, we appreciate you, God of heaven, for the life you have given to us, O oh God. Thank you, God of heaven, for counting us worthy to stand before you, God, and to seek your face with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our spirit. Father, we are praying that tonight, O oh God, will bring every one of us, every life, every brother, every sister, on, on this platform, we bring every one of us under the mark of the blood of Jesus. Father, we are praying, oh God, that the power that is in the blood of Jesus, the cleansing power, the purging power, the sanctifying power in the blood of the Lamb, begin to walk upon every one of our lives tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are praying, oh God, that tonight, as we want to seek your face, oh God, Lord, we openly confess that we don't even know how to pray as we ought. But we depend upon your everlasting arm. And we are praying, O oh God, that the Spirit of God will intercede even through us tonight, O oh God, even according to the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray for all our brethren who are still here to join. We are praying, O oh God, that the Spirit of God will put the consciousness of this meeting into the heart of every one of them, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, righteous Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We want to begin by praising God. We're going to sing this song unto the Lord. O Lord, at be. Eto bi o eto bi oluwa oluwa eto bi o eto bi o eto bi ko senita le fi shaka were o eto bi ko senita le fi shaka were o Eto bi oluwa 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 wa oluwa eto bi eto bi o eto bi oluwa eto bi eto bi o eto bi ko senita le fi shaka were o eto bi O senita le fi shaka were o eto bi oluwa 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 wa oluwa eto bi 
eto bi o eto bi oluwa wa oluwa eto bi o eto bi o eto bi ko se ni to le fi shaka we re o eto bi ko se ni to le fi shaka we re o eto bi oluwa Amen. Amen. We want to bless the name of the Lord because our God has no comparison. There is none that can be likened unto him. He challenged us in the book of Isaiah. He said, to whom shall you liken me? To whom shall I be compared with? There is none that can be compared with our God. The gods of the Egyptian, there are no gods. The gods of the Amalekite, there are no gods. I mean, God, our God is great and is mighty. We want to honor him. We want to exalt him. We want to hallow his name. We want to praise him. Open your mouth and begin to enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Open your mouth and appreciate God for whom he is. Ancient of days he is. The Alpha and the Omega he is. The great one, the problem solver, the one that is constantly watching over our lives in the day, in the night, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at all times, in all seasons, in all situations, in all circumstances. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate God. Can I hear you praising God? Open your mouth and praise God. It is time to appreciate God, brethren. It is time to honor God. It is time to exalt God and say, God, you are mighty, you are excellent in power. There is no like you, oh God, you are full of power, you are full of glory, you are full of majesty, you are full of honor, you are full of authority. Open your mouth and let's praise God, let's worship God. I want to hear your hear us praying, please unmute yourself and let's really praise God with all our heart tonight. Let's give him all the praises, let's give him all the honor. Let's thank him because of all the all that he has done. Look at all that God of heaven has been doing for us from January 1st to this time. The Lord has been so good unto us. Open your mouth and praise him. The Lord is so good. He's so good. The Lord is so good. You are so excellent. The Lord is so good. He's so good. The Lord is so good. He's so great. The Lord is so good. He's so good. The Lord is so great. He's so excellent. Open your mouth and honor God and praise God once again. Let's appreciate God for all the past victories, all the past successes, and what God has done in our lives. Why don't you open your mouth on behalf of, our, of your family members? Why don't you say, God, oh Lord, I praise you. Open your mouth and give him all the praises tonight. Open your mouth and glorify God and say, Father, Lord, I really bless your name because you are God. You are the one that has been helping me. You are the help of my life. You are my helper. You are my light. You are my salvation. You are the rock of my salvation, oh God. How many times the enemy has thrown a lot of arrows against our lives one way or the other. But God did not allow the enemy, the devil, did not allow the agent of darkness, did not allow the powers of hell to prevail over us. Open your mouth and give him all the glory tonight. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord, for He is worthy of our praise. No man or hand should give glory to Himself. For the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord. The glory oh, must be to the Lord. For He is worthy of our praise. No man on earth. 
to give glory to himself. For the glory to our God. Amen. Amen. All the glory must be to God. Whatever God has given to us, whatever gift we have, whatever attainment, either spiritual, physical, financial, material, whatever may be our achievements, remember it is God that has helped us thus far. I want to look back. Some of us have been in this race, in this journey for the past 30 years now. Some have been before this, that they have been in this race for the past 20 years. It's not because we are strong. No, 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 no. It's the grace of God that is constantly helping us look at when the storms of life have been raging here and there. God has been the one that has been succoring us. He has been the one that has been fighting our battle for us against all the hosts of darkness, against all the powers of hell, against all the principalities, against all the forces of hell. Why don't you open your mouth and say, God, you are the one that has been keeping me, oh God. Oh God, open your mouth and begin to appreciate God. Let's thank God. Let's praise the name of the Lord. How many people that will started this journey together. Many of them have gone back. Many of them are no longer in the faith. Some have even gone. Some have even died. But here we are today by the grace of God. It is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. It is the grace of God. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate God for the excellency of his power. Let's give all the honor and praises unto him tonight. Let's thank him because of all he has done. God has been so good unto us. God oh. has been so merciful to us every day and every time. Open your oh. mouth and begin to appreciate God. Let's thank oh. God once again, oh God of heaven. Let's begin to appreciate him. In oh. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to appreciate God once again on behalf of our Father in the Lord. You know, I was given the hand built out today, this afternoon. We were told to go out for publicity in preparation for the, uh, for the global crusade that is starting this coming Thursday. And uh, while we're giving the hand bill, one man just look at it. He said, ah, this papa is getting older and getting older. I said, that is, that is the hero of faith. By the grace of God, the giant of faith. That's the servant of God, the man of God that God has raised for this generation. I want to think about how much God has used this servant of God, our father in the Lord, over the years, how many decades now? More than, more than four decades, more than five decades. God has been with this man. God has been helping him. God has, been, God has proved himself so mighty, even in his life, in his ministry. We want to thank God and say, Father, thank you once again because of your anointing. Thank you because of the power of your grace upon your servant, our Father in the Lord. Thank you because of the presence of God in his life. Anywhere he goes, the presence of God is always making manifest. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to appreciate God? What about all our all is left now? All our state of ASEAN, the region of ASEAN, the nation of ASEAN, all our key leaders, the God of heaven, have been upholding them. Please open your mouth and begin to appreciate God. Join me as we praise God tonight. Join me as we worship God tonight. Join me as we glorify God tonight. As we say, God, thank you for all that you have done, even in the life of this God's general. Oh, Lord, we are grateful unto you. Oh, Lord, we are grateful unto you. Oh, Lord, we are grateful unto you. Father, we appreciate you, God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Please look your Bible very quickly before we pray. The book of Isaiah chapter 49. I want them to flow along so that we can get the detail of what I want to say tonight. The book of Isaiah chapter 49. It's a popular verse we know very well. I'm reading from verse 14. Well, let me read from, let me back up to verse 13. From verse 13. It says, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people. 
Tonight, the Lord will send comfort upon our heart, upon the heart of everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. For the Lord has comforted his people, and we have mercy upon his afflicted. Now look at verse 14. Verse 14 said, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. That's why that's how some of us will normally think at all. Thinking that well, is God still there with me? Is God, God, God is God still there for me? Is he still on my side? Is he still there to succumb me? He said the Lord, he said the Lord, you know, the Zion said, he said the Lord has forsaken me. And my Lord has forgotten me. Look at the reference in verse 15. He said, Can a woman forget a second child? Can a woman, a woman, forget a fucking child that is made have compassion on the son of a woman? That's what God was asking there. He said, can a woman, have you ever seen a woman that will forget a fucking child that she will not even have compassion on that child? He said, yeah, they may forget. Even if it go to the extreme and those women decide to forget their sucking children, he said, oh, yeah, they may forget, yet will I not forget you. That means God has us in mind. He's thinking good about you. He's thinking good about your family. He's thinking good about your career. He's thinking good about our ministry. He's thinking good about everyone on this platform. So do us good. Look at verse 16. He said, Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. That means God is thinking about us. God is still having us in plan. I mean, in his plan. And tonight, we want to cry to God. We want to pray to God. We are going to tell God, number one, we want to tell him and say, God, oh Lord, this night, let make it a night of remembrance in my life. Lord, don't forget me. Put open the book of remembrance before me. Even tonight, oh God, open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. That many of us have been going through challenges of life. We want to ask God and say, God, tonight, oh God, let it be a night of remembrance, a night of breakthrough, a night of God, an unforgettable night. Please open your mouth and call upon the Lord tonight. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord. The Lord can do it once again in our lives. God of heaven can achieve it. And you need to pray. Oh Lord, if you can a woman forget a certain child that he should not have, a, that she should not have compassion on the son of a woman, he said, "Yeah, they may forget him, but I will not forget you." Open your mouth and ask God and say, "God, oh Lord, remember me tonight, oh God. Let this night be a night of remembrance, oh God." A night, a remarkable night, an unforgettable night, oh God. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord tonight. Oh God, we have all the challenges that are confronting us on every side. Let God begin to be close to you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to read from the book of Exodus chapter 2. I think that tonight is a night of remembrance. And tonight is a night of unforgettable encounter with God. Look at Exodus chapter 12. In verse 41 and 42. Please turn your Bible with me. Exodus chapter 12, verse 41 and 42. He said, And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years. That means the children of Israel, they actually sum total that they spent in the land of Egypt was 430 years altogether. He said, Even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Just like tonight, it will be a night of deliverance. Just like tonight, it will be a night of freedom. Just like tonight, it will be a night of remembrance in our lives. Just like tonight, anything that is making our life to be miserable. Tonight, by the power of God, 
everything which will be shattered and be broken out of our life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look at verse 42. In verse 42, look at that verse 42. That's what I'm going to. He said, it is a night to be much observed. Do you understand that? It's a Amen. night to be much remembered unto the Lord for bringing them out, for liberating them, for granting them victory, for giving them triumph, and for making them to have upper hand, and for coming out from the land of Egypt. He said, this is that night, the night of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. It's a night, night of remembrance, night of the Lord. An unforgettable night. You are going to pray tonight and say, God, oh Lord, establish one thing in my life. That tonight you will do something that I will ever live to remember. In my life tonight, open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. That particular thing you have been asking God for in your home, in your family. In the life of your wife, in the life of your children, in the life of your husband, you want to ask God and say, God, let this night be an unforgettable night, oh God, in my life, oh God. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord tonight. Let's call upon the Lord and ask God and say, God, let this night, oh God, be an unforgettable night, oh God. A night to be much observed. A night to be much remembered unto the Lord for, for liberating and for bringing us out, out of every problem, out of every sorrow, out of every affliction, out of every trouble, out of every anxiety and worries. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to pray tonight? Oh Lord, let this night be a night of deliverance in my life, oh God. A night of my breakthrough. A night of my breakthrough. A night with a difference. A in night the of victory. Lord. A night of in prayer. Lord. Open your Jesus. mouth and call upon the Lord tonight. Let's open our mouth and begin to ask God whatever power that wants to stand on our way. And then you want to hinder us from getting out or out of that problem. You want to pray and say, God, by the mighty hand of God, invisible hand of God, begin to call them out of the way tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray and say, God, every strange heart working against our progress, working against our success, working against our deliverance. Open your mouth and say, God, tonight, let those hands begin to dry up now by the fire of God tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray to God tonight. Let those hands begin to dry up completely and totally now by, my, by the mighty power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, let's try to unmute ourselves so that we can pray. I want to hear us praying, brethren. I want to hear us praying very well. Open your mouth. And tonight, I want us to unmute ourselves. You know, there was a particular request that was written yesterday, that was read, raised yesterday, and I love the way our pastor, our brother, brother Paul, the way he led the prayer. In fact, I was so much, uh, you know, uh, I was so much, uh, you know, lost in the spirit, lost in that prayer. You know, one of the prayer requests is this, and we are going to repeat it again. Every power, be, every power behind your matter and my matter, that matter that, that said you are not going to get into your glory, that you are not going to enter into your success, that you are not going to enter into your breakthrough, that you are not going to enter into your Canaan of breakthrough. We are going to pray tonight. All those power behind all our matters tonight, let them be buried tonight by the, by the consuming fire of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray. That power behind every matter, that, that power, that power that be, you know, that be I've been trying to monitor our lives, monitoring our destiny here and here. We want to ask God and say, God, let those power be buried tonight by the consuming fire of the Almighty God tonight. The Bible says, our God is the consuming fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Let the fire come down from heaven tonight. All those powers, all those powers of God working against our life, working against our destiny, working against our family life, working against our wives, against our husband. You want to 
ask God, let the fire of God begin to torment and begin to pray tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Are you calling upon the Lord, brethren? Open your mouth. I want to hear us praying, brethren. Open your mouth and pray. Men ask always to pray and not to fail. This is the sweet hour of prayer. This is the hour of decision. This is the hour to have the upper hand over the enemies, over the forces of darkness. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to pray tonight. We want to tell the Lord there are forces of darkness that are always there. They said they want to monitor that person's life from the very beginning. They know that this person is a, is a child with glory. He's a child with all power and blessings of God. And so they want to hinder the, 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 you know, the, the, the goodness of God, the glory of God in the life of that individual. We want to pray tonight. All those monetary spirits, whether they are there in our family lineage, either the father's line, the father's line or the mother's line lineage, or maybe even from the village, and they want to stand there and they want to be monitoring left and right. We are going to pray tonight. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is a mighty God. We are going to pray and say, God, set confusion into the camp of the enemy tonight. Tonight is a night to be remembered. I told you before. It's a night to be much observed unto the Lord. An unforgettable night, a night with a difference. You want to ask God and say, God of heaven, oh God, all those money to the spirit, all those powers of darkness from the village, from the city, from the waters, from the ocean, from the air, monitoring our destiny, our glory. You want to as God let begin to set them ablaze tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon God and say, God of heaven, oh God, release that fire once again tonight. Let the fire of God come down the corner and the fire burn. Let them begin to visit all their wants tonight. We are, they have taken our names to the shrine of the devil and they are mentioning that name every day and every time in the garden, in the coven of the witch and wizard. You want to ask God and say, God, let the fire go fall down tonight and begin to tear them into pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. All the strange hand working against our lives all the strange and operating in darkness against our life and he said they want to make our life miserable you want to pray tonight and say God, all those strange and let them begin to receive the turn of fire God, even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ even the eye, all those demonic eye, watching us from the spirit realm, we want to send blindness upon those satanic eye, even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord Open your mouth and pray tonight. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's ask God and say, God of heaven, O oh Lord, arise in the power of your spirit, O oh God. Begin to grind them to powder. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and call upon the Lord. Let's ask the Lord and say, God of heaven, O oh Lord, my time has come, O oh God, a night of my breakthrough. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. 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 You know, just um, was it yesterday or so, I was uh, sharing something with my family. Uh, it was this sincere meet of yesterday, either yesterday or day before yesterday or so. And it has to do with Rhoda, Rhoda's faith. You know, Rhoda in the Bible, in Acts chapter 12, they were, you know, Herod lay hand upon James. And then he killed James, one of the pillars in the church, in the early church. And then he saw that the thing pleased the, the, thing pleased the Jews. And so he went further again. And then he apprehended uh, Peter with the mind that he was going to kill Peter also. Uh, and the church that was sleeping at that time, they said, ah, he killed the first one. He want to kill this one again. It will not happen. And so the church gathered together. They began to pray. They began to pray in the house of mother of John Mark. And then they began to pray and seeking the face of God. Do you know, maybe they were thinking that God will come through one particular means to liberate Peter. They didn't know the way and the method. And eventually, 
in answer to their prayers, God sent angel to the prison. You know the story very well. God sent the angel to the prison in the night, and then he liberated Peter. Even Peter himself, he, th he thought he was dreaming. And then eventually when the angel led him from the, through the first gate, the second gate, the third gate, or even onto the entrance of the city, he led him straight, and then he went straight to where they were praying. And while he was even knocking the gate, uh, the, lady, the, the lady in question, the housemaid, Rhoda, came. And then he heard the voice. And when she heard the voice, she, because of the joy and the excitement, she went back to tell them and said, ah, I heard the voice of Peter. You know what they told him? They said, you are mad. That's what they told him. These are people that were, that were praying. They were praying, but it appears as if their prayer was not connected with their faith. But God has, has already answered their prayers. And when the lady insists, I said, no, it is Peter. Eventually, when they open, they discover that, oh, it was Peter. Do you know many times when we pray, our faith will begin to think that way as God answered this prayer? I want to tell you, God answers prayer. I'm saying it the, the because there could be some people among us here that may be having a kind of wandering mind or wandering thought, thinking in their mind. Is God, is God answering our prayers? I want to tell you tonight, God answers prayers. And God is a faithful God. And that's why we are praying that tonight, God will do something spectacular in your life, in your family. You be specific about your very self and say, God, I lift up my family before you. I lift up my wife, my children, my husband unto you, God. Lord, visit us tonight. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God and say, God, Holy Father, once again, oh God, begin to visit me and my family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's ask the Lord and say, God, we need your mighty supernatural visitation upon our lives, oh God. Visit our family, oh God, by the power of your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our life cannot remain the same. Of course, it's a time for us to make progress in our ministry. It's a time to make progress in our family. Everything that has gone bad in that family, life will come into the family. Power will come into your family. Authority will come into your family. Fruitfulness will come into our family. Productivity will come into our family. Progress will come into our family. Promotion and exhortation will begin to come into our family once again. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord tonight. Let's ask God and say, Lord, here we stand. Oh God, it's a night to be much observed. It's a night with a, with, I mean, a night to be remembered before the Lord. A night with a difference that you are going to do something, something that we amaze everyone. Oh God, open your mouth and begin to tell the Lord and say, God, tonight let heaven be open unto my family. Let heaven be open unto my family tonight. Let there be an outpouring of your mighty power tonight, oh God, in my life, in the life of my wife, my children, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's a night of testimony. It's a night of victory and triumph. It's a night that God will glorify himself in every one of our lives. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord. Let's ask the Lord and say, God, do it, oh God, once again tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We want to pray, brethren. We want to lift up our global crusade into the hand of the living God. By the special grace of God, the global crusade is starting this uh, Thursday. And of course, we know that, that it has moved, to, moved now to Republic of Benin. We want to ask the Lord. We want to tell the Lord. It's tied to the supernatural freedom through Christ. We want to pray for the covenant of that uh, GCK, our Father in the Lord. We want to pray and say, God, what I have not seen, what ye have not heard, what has neither come to the heart of men, God will do for us in the June edition of GCK. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let's begin to ask God. 
unprecedented miracles, God, unprecedented miracles, signs and wonders, sinners getting converted in the thousands, hundreds of thousands. Open your mouth and begin to pray. It will be the talk of the town. It will be the talk of the town. How God begin to liberate those who have been bound by the shame of the devil. The Almighty God begin to work mightily, even in their life, in their soul, in their spirit. Let's open our mouth and begin to call upon the Lord tonight. Let's ask God and say, Father, once again, oh God, manifest your power. Even through your servant, our Father in the Lord, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of God begin to increase and multiply. Even upon his servant, in the name of Jesus Christ, Let's call upon the Lord and say, God, visit your church once again. Visit us, oh God, in this global crusade. Everywhere where people are going to be connecting, connecting online through Facebook, through, uh, you know, internet, and through all the, you know, all these social media here and there, God begins to glorify himself. As people are connecting, signs and wonders everywhere. Those who have been bound by the shame of the devil, the Lord will begin to set the captive free. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Amen. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Open your Amen. mouth and call upon the Lord tonight. Let's ask God and say, God, visit us, O God, by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In this crusade, O God, let the, let the name of the Lord be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for the church at Charlotte. We want to tell the Lord and say, God, that church will not die a natural death. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? That church will not die a natural death. Life will come into that church. Power of God will come into that church. Vibrancy will come into that church. God will make that church a militant church. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God now. Let's open our mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord and say, God of heaven, O oh Lord, begin to walk upon that church, begin to make that church. Life will come into that church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Power and authority will be released even upon that church, upon the angel of the church and all the members of the church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh God, this will be taught once again by mighty power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, let vibrancy come into the church. Life will come into the church. Power will come into the church. Authority will come into the church. Revival of souls, I mean, of soul saving people will begin to come into the church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to ask God and say, Lord. This is the church once they give oh God by your mighty power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let God let the name of the Lord be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. We want to pray for our, our pastor, Pastor Matthew, that God has been using to anchor this program. It's not easy to anchor a program of this magnitude. The devil will want to attack left and right. If he cannot get the person, he wants to attack the wife. If he cannot get the wife, he wants to attack the children. If he cannot get the children, he wants to attack the business. If he cannot get this one, he wants to go through this. We are going to pray that God will build a hedge of fire round about him all through in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray for him now. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray and say, God, build a hedge of fire all around your servant and his family members. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whoever touches them, touches fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, Lord, make your servant a flaming fire. Even his children, every one of them, everyone connected to him, God, make them flaming fire all through God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God all over every year in his ministry, in his life, all together. It will be a career of the power of God, a career of the fire and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere he goes, 